Good evening gardening friends. It's Travis from Louisville. Zone 6 slash 7. Come walk with me on a fall garden tour. Mid-September. This is what the front looks like in mid-September. As you can see, the Autumn Joy Sedum is giving us that pink. Hey! And you can also see that the cats love to <laughs> tear up my tombstones. But anyway, back to the tour. Uh, the Let's see, we were going over the sedum. Now this one is not Autumn Joy, this is a different variety. But as you can see, it is a, the wasp love it and the bees. Definitely a late season pollinator of the blooms. Uh, the Blue Victoria Salvia, an annual. I know I've talked about it all, all season long, but I, I plant this up here every year. And uh, it's still giving me color. It's not as vivid as it was maybe um, in the June or July garden tour, but it's still giving me color up here. Um, lamb's ear in the border, it's still, still looking okay. It's starting to get a little brown, but um, also the knockout roses, of course, are still um, giving us color this time of year. The knockouts will usually bloom till, um, till a frost. That is the hot pink. And then this one, I forgot the name of it and I hate that I forgot it, but it's probably my favorite. Starts out a buttery yellow color and fades out into a pale yellow. But it is so fragrant. I know I say that all, all season long, but um, it really is such a nice scent and you can smell it I can almost smell it from the backyard <laughs> limelights have been cut back of course they don't look their best this time of year those bright white blooms just do not last very long and I'm almost wondering if I should have went with something different because I didn't realize how big the uh, limelight hydrangeas get. I mean these guys really need some space to grow and I've got them up up against the house. Um, if you remember in the, um, earlier the season how big and tall the blooms were they were uh, almost to the gutters they were covering up the windows. As you can see, and as I promised, I'll show you a little bit of our haunted yard. I do this every year. And on YouTube, if you notice my name, it's Trav's Gardens, Trav's Haunted Yard. So this is the haunted yard part. But I'm not going to focus too much on the monsters. I'm going to make this a short little garden tour. But um, I did post a video of the front yard at night. So that's on my YouTube page also. So uh, please check that out if you're interested. Purple Aster. Giving me some purple. I don't know why this one over here has turned brown. Um, I don't know if it if it's dead or what's going on with it, but that one turned brown. Russian sage is looking a little eh this time of year. However, the one on the side of the house looks pretty good. 
this is the French marigold, which I have not been out here deadheading like I'm supposed to, to promote blooms. But I need to get out here and uh, harvest some seed because these are my favorite. The French marigolds, as you, you can see here, they're not solid orange. They got a little bit of red orange in there with them. And they're smaller. But I love going out of focus there. I'm sorry. But I just like how they look. They're taller and bushier. That basil is still giving me that awesome burgundy color. And like I said, I'm definitely going to be putting more of that in the garden really like the burgundy foliage but yeah guys that is how the front yard is looking I'm definitely going to be moving some stuff I've already been uh, rearranging the perennials and dividing them up but as you can see it's getting pretty full with the um, autumn joy sedum and this rose here is getting pretty overgrown up under the rose I've got spireas so yeah the rose I don't know if I want to take that center one out there there's actually three here but I don't know if I want to take that one out or just chop it down pretty good but that is a little bit too much Hopefully this is coming out good. Sometimes that can be blurry. Now he wants to look all cute and innocent. This is Edgar Allen. Showing off. Here is the hearse. I'll go ahead and run across the front yard real quick with you. And it's not done. I've still got more to put out and um, a little tweaking to do, but that's why I start early. And then by October, it should be where I want it. That is the custom-made hearse that I had made last summer. found the wheels at um, at home took some of the huge branches that fell in the back and I saved them just for this <laughs> so that's what that is This old girl, I've had her for four or five years. She still looks pretty good. I need to put a little more hair on her. This was one of my first um, paper clay props that I made. And she's looking like she needs a little work. So we'll be working on her. Uh, after this season Columns I made Plywood The cemetery fencing is homemade I Made that out of wood PVC pipe and liquid nail You can see this is the uh, the wood, and then the hose are drilled, and then the PVC pipe is put through.
Back in the back there is the um, headless horseman I made. this past summer. This is the witch's shack and I need to <laughs> set her up. The wind has blown her back. Gotta set this guy back up. I see that he is blown over as well. This is, <clears throat> excuse me, this is the um, portrait lady from It, the new It. Anyway, that's, I made her last year. Go check out the backyard. We're not doing a party this year and we're not doing the haunted walkthrough and trail around the back. We are, we've decided since the coronavirus has kind of made people feel a little eerie about getting together, we're going to take this year off and going to work on some stuff and we'll have plenty of time to make next year even better. So, anyway, back to gardening. Ajuga's still looking good. Sedum. In this uh, planter, I've got aster and orange zinnias. But this was the Russian sage I was talking about. Probably not coming out good in camera, but this is really purple lavender. Some lantana. I've have had some trouble this year with the um, Black Eyed Susans. Some kind of mil mildew problem. They turned brown real soon this year. So, I don't know what's going on there. Some zinnias. Of course, we've got some mums and more aster. I don't know what else I'm going to put in here besides I do want to get uh, the ornamental... Is it ornamental cabbage or kale? I think it's cabbage. But uh, as soon as I find it, that is. I'm going to put that in there as well. Some zinnias I'm keeping up. Like I've said before, this is a construction zone right here. <laughs> Next year it will not look like this. I've got um, formal a formal garden plan for this area. I'm going to do um, some boxwoods and some maybe purple and white flowers. And maybe some kind of centerpiece or a table, a small table and chairs. But anyway, that looks crappy. So we're going to move on. <laughs> More zinnias. These were supposed to be dwarf zinnias or small ones. And they look full size to me. I wouldn't have put them in that planter if they were going to get that big, but it's kind of cute, kind of cottagey. Phlox. Veronica still. This area is a work in progress too. But the main show is this garden bed. Asters purple
Autumn Joy Sedum. This flux has been blooming non-stop since June. And uh, I've cut most of my flocks back. And most of them, if you cut them back uh, mid-summer or once the first blooms are spent, if you cut them back, though, they should reflush for you and bloom again. So that's what they're doing now. I forget the variety of this hot pink. Hot pink one. Purple back there. Japanese anemone. A fall perennial or late summer bloomer. This canthus grass. Looking good as always. It needs to be propped back up. But I will probably be chopping that girl down and dividing her. Hibiscus still giving me uh, blooms. Gorgeous. Late summer color. Early fall. And this here is my favorite aster. It's a little bit taller aster and um airy I guess you guys can say or what some people say but I really like that lavender color and the airiness and you can still see things in the back this is a short um, sedum more of a fuchsia color. I don't think I've posted the video yet, but uh, I've got two clumps of the swamp weed, milkweed, and boy were they covered with uh, caterpillars. I don't know where they went, but there were all kinds on there. Yeah. This is that pretty blue wildflower been giving me color since early June and a few cosmos left and uh, calendula there's a smoke bush that I planted about a month ago burgundy foliage sorry for the bumpiness not much going on back here besides the sedum and of course this is uh, bluebeard or blue mist I'm not I can't really remember but something like that shrub still giving me those Pretty blue blooms. Speaking of dividing perennials, I've divided up some Black Eyed Susans and put them around this tree, as well as the sedum there. And this was my big project today. I took all of the lilies out of here and different things that I had in here that were just overgrown needed to be split up and divided I want to keep um, low things in here because I don't want anything to swallow up the uh, blue spruce so we have the border of variegated ajuga and what I've done is to make the circle is I've just took a tobacco stick against the um, trunk of the tree and kind of pivoted pivoted it around <laughs> and uh, that's where I planted planted the ajuga to make it somewhat of a circle <laughs> but yeah the plan in here is for um, I'm going to put in purple and white in here So 
something low. I haven't figured out what it's going to be, but nothing too tall. All right, guys, we just have a few more seconds of my video before my time runs out. So I'm just going to walk. Show you a few things. Also move the turtle head back here. I want to go ahead and thank you guys for tuning in this week. And I will see you in the next one.